It's good to have concern. It's good to have concern over your marriages, your relationship, your loved ones, your relationship with Jesus. Concern is a good thing. Concern focuses on today. Worry though is anxiety over something that might or might not happen tomorrow. So that's a very big thing to you want to differentiate. Thank you. Y'all may be seated. Jess, are you worried? Oh, please. I'm a, little, I'm a little worried too. <laughs> I think I think all y'all would be worried too if you're standing on this stage as well. I have a question. Do y'all know any dashboard police? You might be saying, EJ, what's a dashboard police? Well, as soon as I was able to drive and got my license, I was blessed, I'm gonna use the word blessed loosely, with the opportunity, in the word opportunity loosely, to drive my sisters, Landry and Laurie, to school every day. The stories, the battles that came from those drives over those two years, we, have, we don't have enough time to tell all the stories. But Landra and Laurie would watch my dashboard like hawks as soon as we got in the car. They were filled with worry. They were like, EJ's speedometer is going one mile an hour over. Call mom and dad, we're gonna die. We're gonna die in a car crash. EJ's gas light's on. Oh my goodness, we're gonna die. They were so filled with worry. I know some of you might be not worried about your spouse driving, maybe your kids driving, maybe you're worried about job loss. I know there's so many people with so many people facing layoffs. Maybe you're worried about your health, a loved one's health. Maybe you're worried about your kids. In light of what happened yesterday, maybe you're worried about our nation, the political discord we all face. Just we face worry on a daily basis, but how do we navigate worry? That's right, but let's start by defining what worry is. And worry can be often described as a feeling of uneasiness or anxiety about something that may or may not happen in the future. But, you know, we're all wired differently in life, and we're all wired differently when it comes to worry. And, you know, some of us are prone to worry. I, I mean, goodness, story of my life. But <laughs> like EJ, some, some of you guys don't even know what the word worry is. I have no clue what worry means. Yeah, no. And so it's natural from time to time to feel worried, but it's when that worry consumes us and takes over our lives is when worry becomes a problem. That's right. You know, we have so many types of worry that we all face on a daily basis. We face physical worry, that's cancer, the flu, COVID, financial worry. I mean, inflation's on the rise. Anyone trying to buy a house knows the struggle. There's your nest egg retirement, there's so much worry going on. There's also emotional worry. It's reported the millennial generation is the most stressed out generation in American history. Also, we're struggling with worry over our relationships. Marriages are struggling. Families are dealing with worry over their kids and their future. We're spiritually worried. Culture is trying to redefine morality. What's right is wrong. What's wrong is now Right, and so we're facing worry, Jess, everywhere we turn. Yes, but you know, we're here to give you some good stats, some good let's get, news. Let's get some positivity about in here. Worry, okay? So 60% of our worries actually never happen. And 20% of our worries, actually, we can't control no matter what we do. 10% of the worries that we have are so minor that they don't even matter in the bigger picture. And the remaining 10%, only four to five percent of those we can't even do anything about, which leaves just two percent of our worries that are actually real. Two percent. So what you're saying is the great philosophers of the 90s, Timon and Pumbaa, were correct. <laughs> Hakuna Matata, no worries. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll take myself down to FC Kids with that one. Yeah. Okay. So don't worry. Easier said than done, right? But what if Jesus told us not to worry? Because he did. Yeah. He said it in the Bible over a hundred times not to worry. But you might be thinking, is God out of touch with reality for telling us not to worry? I mean, he doesn't know what's going on. He's not here. But, you know, God has so many ways for us to overcome worry. And, you know, worry is taking the things of tomorrow and bringing them into today. When I was born, I was diagnosed with a rare genetic and neurological disease called neurofibromatosis type one. What that means, it basically causes tumors to grow on your nerve endings. And I have cutaneous tumors that's above the skin and subcutaneous tumors below the skin. And when I was first diagnosed in the 90s when I was born, 
they told my parents just a very grave diagnosis. They said I would have speech impediments. I would never be able to play sports. I have bone deformities. I would never have kids. I'd probably never get married. They just gave them a laundry list of things and then they'd send them on their merry way. This is the 90s, no Google, no WebMD. And so my mom was filled with worry. My dad was filled with worry. And I said, mom, how'd you do it? She said, EJ, I was a mess. When you were a baby, I had that baby monitor cranked to 11. Anytime you cried, I was running to the crib where you were having a seizure. And so she dealt with worry. They both dealt with worry on a very major level. And maybe you're not dealing with health issues today, but maybe it's a new transition in life, a new job, a big move. But, you know, I think of the story of my parents when they came to America from the Philippines and, you know, they want to start a new life for our family. And I mean, I can't imagine the culture shock of a new place, a new country, a new people, a new everything. And, you know, just thinking about that story just makes me worried. But despite all those changes and worries that they had, they didn't let those things get in the way of what God had planned for them. And, you know, sometimes worry can take over our lives and we need to recognize when it does. And in, the first thing we need to do is to recognize the impact of worry. And worry can affect us in so many yeah. ways. It can lead to sleepless nights, difficulty concentrating, headaches, stomach aches, all, you know, I'm a nurse. I can tell you all those things. But <laughs> when I was graduating nursing school, you know, I was like, woo, test days, we're over, we're done. But for all my nurses out there, you know that there's one final test that we have to take. It's called the NCLEX. And for those of you who don't know, it's the nursing board exam. And, you know, I studied for what, like hours, months, months, days, I don't know, felt like forever. Yeah. But, you know, I took the test, I was feeling good, and then two weeks later, I got the results back and sure did fail. And I've never failed a test in my life, so. I was like, there's no way, they have this wrong. This is Jessica Young you're talking about, the <laughs> queen of test taking. I'm like, no, they, they got this wrong. I couldn't believe it. Well, they were right. And I failed. <laughs> so, <laughs> worry hit me like a ton of bricks. But, you know, often when unexpected bad things happen in our lives, we, the first reaction we have is to, you know, question God and get angry and say, why? Why me? Why out of all people did I have to fail? But, you know, it's not because we're angry at God, but it's because we're worried at what's not going to come or what is going to come next in our lives. And, you know, as Christ followers, we're not immune to being worried. And we have to work harder as Christ followers to remember God's faithfulness in our lives and how every moment in our lives that he's had for us is perfectly timed and thought out because of him. You know, the teaching of Jesus is so practical. I love the teaching of Jesus, especially in his most famous message, the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is unpacking what it looks to live for him in his kingdom. And they were dealing with a very subject of worry 2,000 years ago. And what's important to note is we're not talking about concern. It's good to have concern. It's good to have concern over your marriages, your relationship, your loved ones, your relationship with Jesus. Concern is a good thing. Concern focuses on today. Worry, though, is anxiety over something that might or might not happen tomorrow. So that's a very big thing that you want to differentiate. But let's what it looks like what it says in Matthew 6, 25. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? So what is Jesus telling us? Jesus is saying, whatever we worry, whatever it may be, we're being divided. We're being pulled apart on the inside. Worry does so many things to us. Worry is destructive. Worry causes panic attacks, mood swings, missed opportunities. Worry is also a distraction. Worry is a distraction. Worry is also a distortion. The evil one will use anything in his arsenal to take our focus off our loving Heavenly Father with something as simple as worry. It's also a disobedience. You might be saying, a disobedience? In preparation for this message, I reached out to my uncle, Dr. Ben Young. I said, Ben, is worry a sin? He said, no, not right off the cuff it's not. He said, we're all human. We all deal with multitude of emotions, but if we don't quickly pivot out of emotion and we let our worry consume us, that's when it becomes dangerous because the evil one will use anything as simple as worry to get us off our focus. Yes, and speaking of worry that consumes us, it 
brings me back to a time when I was the ripe age of five years old. And, you know, my mom and dad decided to take me and my sister to Disney World. And, you know, great idea. And at this time, I had a big fear, very large fear, of a Disney villain called Cruella de Vil. <laughs> and for those of you who've never been to Disney, the, you know, all the characters, they just come around and they just, like, you know, do a little parade. And I locked eyes with Cruella, and I was like, this is the end for me. I'm done. You know, it was, it was over. So I cried, and I panicked, and I, my, my mom could tell you probably I cried the whole day. But fast forward to a few days later when we got home, my mom was brushing my hair, and just clumps and chunks of hair were falling out of my head. And I was literally had bald spots on my head. And, you know, moral of that story is safe to say that the stats were true, yes. that a bunch of our worries aren't even real. So there's no reason to be scared of Corel DeVille. No, there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look back in Matthew uh, chapter 6, verses 27, 28, and 31. It says, Who of you by worrying could add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? When we worry and we're in fear, we're living like pagans. We're living self-absorbed, self-centered life. We're saying when worry takes a hold of us, we're not trusting in God. We're not letting his supernatural God factor come into our plans we have in our lives. And I know you know my dad is a king of rhyme. He's like the rhyme master general. He's amazing. So I'd be doing a disservice, Jess, if I did not, as a son, include a little rhyme for everyone here today. When we worry, we have misplaced devotion that always brings commotion into our lives. So misplaced devotion that brings commotion. Yes, but you know, Jesus... G- <laughs> All right, we can clap for that one. <laughs> we love a good rhyme. You know, but Jesus gives us the tools for dealing with worry. So how do we manage our worry? In Matthew 6.33, it says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And so, you know, Jesus has to be our first priority. We have to seek him first, seek his kingdom first. Yes, that's our responsibility, like Jess said. So we have to seek his kingdom first. Think of us, those of us who are Christians, we were presented the gospel at one point. We either chose to accept it, or chose to reject it. If we accepted it, we were adopted into the family of God. We were born again. The Holy Spirit now lives within us and is for us through every trial and every tribulation. I think about so many times in Jess and I's life, my family's life, where worry could have consumed us. I think about the time my dad had major open heart surgery. I watched my mom stand so strong through so many what ifs of worry. I saw my parents stand strong through the death of my sister, Lee Beth. I've seen Jess and I and me walk through my diagnosis of neurofibromatosis for 32 years through so many tests at MD Anderson, through so many appointments. It's just, it was exhausting, but I learned at a very young age how to deal with worry. Think about a blank contract for a second. So many of us are so naive as Christians even. We fill out this contract and we want to hand it to God. We want to say, God, we want to live here, drive this car, have this spouse, have this amount of kids. They'll go to this school, this college. And we snap our puny fingers at God and say, God, sign off on this because I'm a Christian. No, what God wants us to do is hand him a blank contract and say, God, we want to live for your plans and for your purpose. And you might be saying, how, how does this work? How can I give that blank contract to, to God? And, you know, it's only when Jesus is our first priority that God answers this prayer. In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. That's right. So we need to make God's concerns, our concerns, his plans, our plans, his purpose, our purpose, we need to actively seek him in everything we do. We do that by giving him our first. Landra mentioned it last week, my sister, about every morning we came down getting ready for school or just going about our day. My parents had their Bibles and journals open. They were modeling what it looked like to give Jesus the first of every day. 
And I saw my dad even doing this before messages on Sunday morning. I would come down early. If I was driving to volunteer, I would come and see him in his office and he'd be actively reading in the Bible. I'm like, you're about to preach to the masses and here you are still having your daily quiet time even on Sunday mornings. We also need to give him a first of every week by being in church, and not just by attending church, by attending our Bible study classes, being a part of our connect groups, serving groups, the mix, your whole family needs to revolve their lives around this church. We also need to give them the first of everything we make. That's basic obedience, that's the tithe, that's the first 10%. I think about a check engine light. Think about a check engine light. When it ever comes on, you're like, oh gosh, I gotta take the car to get service or taken care of. Anytime we worry, God is flashing a check engine light on our lives. He's saying, hey, stop right now. Don't worry. This is time to pivot and pray and submit this worry to God. Two months ago, Jess and I were just having a regular other day. We had several appointments we had to take care of. One of those was a doctor's appointment. So I met Jess at the doctor's office. We went up to the room. Jess got a sonogram. Then we went back to our patient room, waited for the doctor. The doctor shortly after came in. He sat down and he said, Mr. and Mrs. Young, I'm sorry to tell you this, but your son has a hole in his heart. Jess and I were devastated. We didn't want to believe it. I'm like, a hole in his heart? Like, what, what, what the heck, God? I was like, oh, so many questions, not very many answers. Jess and I shortly made our way out of the doctor's office to her car separately. I got to my car, I broke down, I wept. Jess wept in her car. We called our parents, both our parents were weeping. We just wanted that day to end. It was just such a brutal day. We made our way back home. We wanted to shut our eyes just to forget that day even happened. Shortly thereafter, we woke up and decided, hey, it's best to be with family. So we drove up to Jess's parents' house in Allen. And on our way up, my mom called me and she said, EJ, how are you doing? She said, EJ, I know it's difficult to hear this right now, but I wanna share something with you that your uncle Ben shared with your dad and I when we found out you were diagnosed with NF. He said, 2 Corinthians 12, nine, he says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness as so that Christ's power may rest upon me. He said, God's sovereignty is the same it was yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And um, a verse that's really stuck with me over the past couple of weeks is Isaiah 43, 2. Sorry. (laughs) I got you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. Whenever you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. This past Wednesday, Jess and I went back to the doctor just for a follow-up, just to get our ducks in a row so when our son is born, we have everything in order for if we have to have surgery or if we have to do anything we need to do. The doctor said, hey, we need to do another sonogram just to make sure everything's in order. He did the sonogram, came back to the patient room after we did the sonogram, and he said, Mr. and Mrs. Young, it's a miracle. Your son's heart is perfect. (laughs) The hole is not there. We're like, praise God. It's a miracle. We knew it. You might be saying, EJ, this past eight weeks, the past two months, how have you walked through countless worry? We've worked it by redirecting our devotion and emotion from ourselves and actively chasing after Jesus and his kingdom. That's right. And it's, you know, one day at a time. And, you know, Jesus is teaching us to live one day at a time. And not to worry about tomorrow, but take it one day at a time. And we choose to trust the Lord daily, every hour, every minute of our lives. And, you know, 
The past eight weeks after finding out about our son's heart condition, you know, we chose to trust him no matter what came next. And I don't know what worries you may be facing today, but God is calling us to lay those worries at his feet and trust him one day at a time. Yeah, and going back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus is making a promise, a forever promise with us. Jess mentioned it earlier, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. That's our responsibility, to seek him first and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. That is God's responsibility to us. Would you pray with us? Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for everything you're doing in and through this church, God. Right now, we lift up to you so many people, God, whatever they're battling, whatever worry is heavy on their heart, God, we ask that you just be with them, meet them right where they are, God, and just remind them, no matter how difficult life may be getting, how worrisome it might be getting, to quickly pivot out of it and lay it at your feet, God, because we know you're master of all, we know you're in control of all. I also know there's so many people here, God, who are battling, they're maybe never giving their lives over to you. If you've never made that decision to accept Jesus into your life, I wanna lead you in a prayer. If that is today, the day you wanna make it, just say this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I admit to you, I'm a sinner. I believe that you sent your son Jesus down to this earth to pay the penalty for my mistakes. Right now, Jesus, I repent of my sin and I turn and follow you, God. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for rescuing me. We pray this in your name, amen. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching the Ed Young YouTube channel. That's right, and if you wanna be inspired, encouraged, and challenged like never before, subscribe and click the notification button. We believe this channel can help change your life.